I will start with roll call attendance. I'm just going to go across how you appear on my screen. Brianna Quinn. Here. Mary Carney. Here. Courtney Meyer. Here. Irene Costello. Here. Denise Barstow Man. And I, Diana West, am present. Thank you, everyone. I now like to call for a motion to approve the minutes from our November 23rd, 2023 meeting. I distributed them last week, I believe. So moved. I got Thank it. Thank you. And a second? I second it. All right. Any discussion, corrections, additions need to be made? Hearing none, roll call vote again. Brianna Quinn? Here. Mary Carney? Yes. Approved. Courtney Meyer? Yes. Irene Costello? Yes. Denise Bar Snowman's? Aye. And Diana West, I vote aye as well. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, so I got an email last week about a new project at 237 Russell Street. I distributed renderings of the proposed hotel for that site in an email this afternoon. So they want to build a town place suites, I think it's called, where the, I think it was once a comfort inn, then a roadway inn was. This is kind of right across the street from Spruce Hill Lane uh, of Route 9. So the Hadley Center Historic District is ends just before you get to that point. Um, so it's not within the historic district. Uh, I mean, the building itself, I mean, I don't love it, but it's not terrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, ultimately, I think it's the planning board's decision. Do you guys want me to sh open the rendering? I can share my screen, maybe. Sure. Um, what's the name of the hotel or the hotel group? Uh, the person who reached out to me is named Kishore Palmer. It's on the rendering. Sheridan. I think it's in the Sheridan it's family. Oh, it's Town a Sheridan. Place Suites. Is that Marriott, maybe? Marriott. Marriott. Yes. Well, that's good. Okay. I can show it to you. I was hoping there'd be a nice bar in it, but it doesn't look like. <laughs> <laughs> we need a nice place for drinks. Is it one of those, um, like, efficiency? I, I think so. Uh, I think that's business what it's... hotel. I, could I, get a I, little couldn't, um, I couldn't zoom in to see what the the rooms were, how they were laid out. So, yeah, it is very small. Um, but this looks like the parking lot. Mm -hmm. This is one facade. I mean, it's fine. I just hate fake brick. It's or stone. That's like my one. Oh, we got. Um, we've discussed in the past the bylaws state that. The style of the building has to match the styles around it. I mean, in that area, it's kind of like all like modern Hodge colonial, Hodge. if you will. Hodge, it doesn't really have anything specific. It's not like West Street or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, I think we don't have really anything to say against this design. It would be up to the planning board and their opinions on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got a cupola. I was going to say... There's nothing that um, New England loves more than slapping a cupola on something and saying it's <laughs> colonial. <laughs> Every Cumberland farm is out there. <laughs> All right. So um, does anyone have other opinions about that? Oh, sorry. I should stop sharing. No, in relation to uh, the commission, no. I have no other opinions. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, I'm fine with saying to the planning board that we don't have any concerns or comments, if everyone's okay with that. It doesn't sound like we have any jurisdiction for it either. <laughs> Not really. Um, okay. I think it looks better than what was there before. Yeah. yeah that's sure. true. It was a step up. Yeah, I was going to say that area. Can't really complain. <laughs> it's like kind of just like a mix of all kind of things so it's like a car good. graveyard like these yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right well maybe to make us official we should uh make a motion to say that we do not have any concerns about the design of the template suite at this time and we defer to the planning board okay. aye do i have a second for that second 
Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Jenna Quinn. Yes. Mary Carney. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Erin Costello. Aye. Needs Barstow Mans. Aye. And I, Diana West, am also yes. So motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Okay, 101 East Street. So following our November meeting, I reached out to the planning board about the possibility of the building being granted a variant since it is historic and uh, the streets have moved without it moving. <laughs> uh, Bill Dwyer from the planning board recommended I reach out to the zoning board of appeals as the owner could request what is called a finding, which would be done to determine if renovations to the building would be detrimental to the area since it is an existing non-conforming structure. So I reached out to the ZBA and Andrew Bombardier replied, and he implied that the property was a good candidate for a finding, especially since it is historical and the historical commission is interested in it. So I passed this information on to Cyrus and um, I haven't heard anything more. So, but he did seem interested in the, the idea. Um, can, I will, I, can we oh, just back up a second because I'm, um, I'm not sure I'm uh, on the same page as everybody. So the proper, the building can't in its con existing structure cannot be used for business purposes because it's too close to the street and it's out of code, right? So it cannot be added on to. Yeah, that too. Because of that, it ca it could be used as a business. It's just that no additions could be made to it. But it's even right now isn't it be isn't it um a rental a residential rental yeah okay tell you what i wouldn't want to be sitting in a dentist chair that close to the the street but um why why could it be a business that close to the street in the first place when you're supposed to be 50 feet off the street because the house was built before it was out of compliance and the street moved closer to it. I think it's grandfathered in, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what I was speaking about is that they would do, they call it a finding. It's essentially an investigation to determine if if they were to add on to it, if this would be detrimental to the area. Andrew Bombardier implied to me that most likely it wouldn't be since that area has already changed significantly in the past few years. Um, it's as you mentioned, it's out of compliance right now because it doesn't fulfill those qualifications of, I think you said 50 feet from the road, but that's simply because it was built in 1840 and then mm -hmm. and now almost 200 years later, things have changed. So this Correct. is just one option for Cyrus to explore to try to save the structure. Uh -huh. So um, the cost of moving it wouldn't be incurred essentially. And he is interested in exploring that to add something onto it to make it a viable structure for his business. But as it stands now, if he just went to the planning board and the building commissioner to apply for these things, it wouldn't pass. The Zoning Board of Appeals would have to approve it first. Well, I guess it's a good thing that they have three years to figure this out and get it built <laughs> because they're in their other place. Um, so, um, okay. I just seems to me if I were sitting in his shoes, I would be really getting antsy about, you know, getting a plan and starting to build my business, which is a business district and getting on with it. So, oh. Uh, he seems to have a little bit of a slower timeline than perhaps uh -huh. others do. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other oh, comments? Good thing on... we've been cooperative. <laughs> yes, he's been great to work with. Any other comments on 101 East Street? Okay, do we have any updates on the V1 vodka preservation restriction? I do not have any updates. Okay, thank you. All right, demolition delay bylaw. Uh, how goes the research? Ooh, so much. <laughs> so much to talk about. Um, I don't even really know where to begin, actually. Okay, so. 
I have it all handwritten because I'm old school with my notes here. Um, so one thing of interest before I kind of dive into everything else that I've um, been learning about is that I spoke to, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but I spoke to someone named, where are my notes on him? Chris Skelly today. Does anyone know him? From MHC or somewhere? Yes. Yeah. He, well, he was now he um, doesn't work there anymore. He has retired and now he does private consulting. He used to work for the Massachusetts Historical Commission for like 20 years. And he actually lived in Hadley for a while. He lived here I, I want to say it was probably close to 30 years ago now. Um, as he said, it was before the rail trail was built. So um, I think it was quite a while back. But um, I spoke with him at length on the phone and he was very, very helpful. Um, and he actually met with the Amherst uh, Historical Commission in relation to their demo delay bylaw because they were trying to rework their bylaw. And so they had him come in and speak to them. Uh, I think it was about three years ago. Um, because they needed to amend their demo delay bylaw. So anyway, he does now that he's retired from the historical commission, he does private consulting. Um, so I wanted to run it by you guys um, as a potential use of our funding to have him come and meet with us in a meeting to talk about potentially what we should be doing um, either with the demo delay or he also does, let's see, he does preservation planning summaries, which he said is better than just like a preservation plan altogether, which is upwards of like $35,000. And I was like, yeah, I don't think the CPA is going to go for that. <laughs> but um, to do a preservation plan summary, which would help us kind of checklist what we need to do in town in terms of getting more of these laws in place. Um, he said that would cost around $750 for him to come and meet with us. It's like a whole day where we analyze everything that we have um, and go through kind of a plan of what we want to do. And then he also could just come to a meeting for an hour and a half to two hours um, and talk to us at length about whatever questions we have in any, any one of these discussions. Um, and that's about $150. So we went over the prices just up front. That's, I just wanted to run by that stuff, but he was very, very helpful in terms of the demo delay um, and answered many questions that I had about it. Um, he also said that we should reach out to Jen Doherty at the Massachusetts Historical Commission, um, which I plan on doing, uh, but haven't done yet. Um, and let me see what else he said. He ha they also have, he has, a, the, the Massachusetts Historical Commission has a demo delay bylaw that's their model that they use and he's actually the one who wrote it. So if we get it from the MHC and we have any questions about it, he would be the person to reach out to. And he lives in Shelburne Falls, so he's pretty local as well. So that's, he's a, I think a really good um, resource for any questions that we may have since he's been doing this forever. Um, so, oh, and another presentation that he also can do is like he said about community outreach. So a way to kind of get more of the people in town on board with historical preservation and ways that we could potentially do outreach to make that happen. So I thought that that might be like the one that might be the best for us, since I know that that's kind of the trouble that the historical commission has had in the past. But anyway, so that's about him. He's, he was extremely nice and very helpful. So I was happy to have him as a resource to ask any further questions of if we need to. In terms of the demo delay bylaw, sorry, this is like a very long-winded presentation okay. I have here. I, like, anyway. Can I ask um, one question before you move on? Yes, 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 would yes. The community outreach uh, presentation, would, all, would that also be around $150? Yeah, he said he's happy to do any um, Zoom meeting or in-person meeting with everyone um, for like an hour and a half to two hours. And he has these as standard presentations that he put together when he was on the historical commission and now just does them as consulting on the side. And he said he just, all he does now is work with local historical commissions to help them with local preservation. So I thought that was like a really niche spot that we might really fit into. Um, I don't know, you know, where we want to allocate our budget for this year, but I thought it was a food for thought. Um, and any other questions about him before I move on to demo delay? Sounds like a great resource. Yeah, he was like really, really awesome. And I watched his Zoom meeting um, with the Amherst Historical Commission a few years ago. Um, it's a couple of hours long and learned a ton of stuff from that as well. So he is really helpful, I think. Brianna, what's his name? Did you tell us? Did you mention yeah, his name? Yeah, it's um, Chris Skelly. It's S-K-E-L-L-Y, I believe. 
yeah, he's fantastic. And he worked at UMass. He taught at UMass for a while, lived here, lives locally. So he knows the area. He knows kind of all about what's going on here. And um, anyway, great resource, I think. Um, so about the demo delay bylaw, essentially what we need to do moving forward as a group is to decide on several key points of what we are looking for in our demo delay, delay bylaw. I know we had touched upon this the last time I was in a meeting um, two meetings ago, um, but I've done more research about that since then. So the three types of demo delay bylaw are either age, categorical, or list. And Chris recommended not doing the categorical, which I agree with, because then you have to kind of catalog all these different things and same with the list. The list is also very complicated. It would require, I think, a lot of work on our part and the town's part because Hadley doesn't seem to have a comprehensive database of all of the historical structures. And also the problem with the list in a town like Hadley that um, stems from kind of an agricultural base is that then you have to list structures as well as just buildings. So there might be a structure that's on a plot of land, but isn't doesn't have a residential address or a commercial address. And so then you're like, are we listing barns? Are we listing outbuildings? Like, are we listing whatever it is, whatever the structure might be? And so the list can pose a lot of problems within an agricultural community. So I think age, the age one, which I know Courtney and Irene and I had already kind of decided that that was where we wanted to go anyway, but um, do, in doing further research, I think that age is the best way to go. But from talking to Chris, the other thing that I found out that I think would be helpful is that we can add an amendment to the demo delay bylaw. So we can do it by age and make that kind of like our main point. But I think what Amherst did from the gist of that meeting that I got is that they added then an extra list. And the extra list was buildings that they found historically or whatever, in whatever way were significant, um, even if they were more modern that they just didn't want demolished for no reason. And so we can kind of add like an annexed little list that says, hey, we think these buildings are also significant to the town and we don't want them destroyed, you know, be destroyed even if they're not within the age limit that we pose. So, um, so that's possible. We just have to kind of find the writing to do that within the bylaw. Um, let's see. Um, so most towns have like a 50 to 75 year age limit, or they can say something along the lines of before the 1930s. So we kind of just have to figure out as a group what we think the best age is to do in Hadley. And, you know, I think some of you guys have a much better sense of the age cap that we might need to put on it since I, you know, and I know Irene, I watched the meeting from last time. I know Irene had said, you know, she's new also, and we may not know like the the buildings that are super significant and all of them um, moving forward. And so I would definitely rely on you guys to kind of decide what the age limit would be. If that makes sense. Um, I mean, of course, the downside to that is not having the option to include newer buildings, but I think then the little other list that we can add um, would be helpful with that if we find anything that we want to add to that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and the other downside to having a list would also be that you can miss things, especially if the list uh, is included in the bylaw, which a lot of them have a list included in the bylaw. And so if you have that, then you add the list in and then it's kind of like set in the bylaw and then you can miss buildings and then later on you can't add them or it's really difficult too. So I think age is the way to go. Um, but we need to choose the length of the, of the demo delay as well. So not just the age, but the length. And typically towns go anywhere from six to 18 months. So that's the second sort of talking point that we need to figure out um, is our length of the demo delay that we're interested in. Um, let's see what else. Uh... Brianna, I think um, yes. in some of the things I've read up there about the, the sort of best practices is that six, is, six months is too, too not enough time. Too short to have it, and it, it should be a minimum of twelve, maybe eighteen. Yeah, I would I would agree with you there for sure. Um, oh, the other thing that we can add to the list then, if we had a separate list, would be things like barns or like if there was a carriage house on a particular property that we knew um, would be helpful, even if the 
age was set, then if it technically didn't have a, a residential address or a business address or something like that, we could just like make a note of that and make sure that we were aware of the carriage house or any other structures like that, um, because they're especially vulnerable to demolition. Um, and we could also, another thing we could do about significant outbuildings and barns is that we could propose a demolition by neglect bylaw or a minimum of maintenance bylaw, which are separate bylaws. Um, but those are some things that we could look into if we we're interested in them. And um, I learned also that you can actually go so far as to say this tree is historically significant and add, add in a little part about historically significant trees. Like people take it really far, I guess, um, in one of the meetings that I watched uh, in Amherst people were actually arguing over like a fence post and things like that. And, and the chair had said he'd been approached like over half a dozen times about saving a tree and whether that counted as a structure. So you can get like really, really nitpicky in the bylaw. So um, yeah, we definitely can't be super arbitrary. I think we have to be really clear cut on what our decisions are on what we want to have listed as a structure and what types of structures, et cetera. Um, I'm sorry, Brianna, you said yes. demolition by neglect. And then what was the other one you brought up? Um, it's called a minimum of maintenance bylaw. So basically that people have to upkeep their buildings to a certain degree. Otherwise it's considered demolition by neglect. Thank you. Which I know, you know, that might be kind of difficult here because so many barns are in disrepair and so many outbuildings. So we would have to figure out if that was even feasible in Hadley because so many of them are already kind of at that point, I think. Um, so, and there was, it was demolition by neglect and then there was the other one about um, required yeah, like minim maintenance. Yeah, minimum. Minimum, a minimum of maintenance by law, which I guess Chris said those were options, but I think um, they may not be feasible here just based on the age and kind of wear and tear of a lot of the agricultural structures in the area. But, you know, it just depends on what, we want to do and and what the town is willing to push through. We would um, probably so get if we, push back from people yeah. about that in terms of yeah. funding. Like those buildings are in disrepair because people don't have the money to fix them. Mm -hmm. And you Agreed. know, a couple of years ago, we had someone come to us who wanted to get CPA funding to fix their tobacco barn, and we supported it. But there's because it be it's a private entity, it there was a lot of hoops he had to jump through. So eventually he pulled his application. So there's just like, there isn't a good avenue right now yeah. to help people out in those situations. Yeah, I think I think that's why the demolition delay bylaw with the age stipulation makes a lot of sense because then, you know, if they brought it to our attention and they said, hey, we want to demo this building and we looked at it and we said, the poor thing is totally falling down, like, you know, whatever it is. And obviously there aren't enough funds to fix this and maybe it's not might be a hundred years old, but it's not historically significant enough for us to care about, then we would just say, go right ahead. Cause like with a demo delay bylaw, we have that power then to say yes or no, like we want to, you know, apply it or we don't want to apply it. So then, you know, we wouldn't be meeting that kind of a wall, I think as often as if we tried to put in these other bylaws that may not make sense for Hadley. Um, they're just options. We can, mm -hmm. you know, include trees if we want to. <laughs> we can include fences. We can include whatever we want, but we just have to decide what it is that we actually are looking at. And I think, um, like you said, a, a lot of the time, I think there's pushback in, in, to a certain degree, depending on what resources are available. And I think in this situation, probably like a less is more approach is better if we want to get anything pushed through in town meeting. Um, so if we wanted to create an age-based bylaw, we could potentially come up with some language that can include the list of buildings we'd like to see preserved that are younger than the age criteria. And then um, we could also kind of add to that, like any historically significant properties that are newer than the age bracket. And also, like I said, any outbuildings that we wanted to make sure were on that list. So moving forward. And then the two other pieces we have to consider were kind of on that topic as well, which is what do we define a building as? So that's the other thing about the outbuildings, et cetera. And then what do we define demolition as? Because mm -hmm. demolition can mean a lot of different things. Like for example, some towns have a bylaw that's so strict that the house that the um, anonymous letter was about, that could be considered demolition of that house because they took off so much of the face of the house. 
um, and the architectural features. So we have to define demolition um, as well. And let's see. Yeah, so there's a there's a really wide definition of structure and there's also a really wide definition of demolition. And it depending on how our bylaw is written, um, yeah, the changes that are made to certain houses would be within or without or outside of that um, category. So there's a lot of things that we have to define as a, as a group, as a commission, and there's a lot of things we have to make decisions about before we move forward in writing the bylaw. Um, Chris said that a couple of examples um, of things that we could list as demolition or not demolition is whether to think about things like is removal of a roof demolition? Is removal of more than 25% of the square footage of a house demolition? Is removal of architectural features of importance demolition? So um, we have to decide what's worth including and what isn't. And is there anything else that I wanted to say about that? I think that is basically the talking points that I wanted to bring up in this meeting. So just a couple of choices that we all have to discuss and um, make choices about before we can kind of uh, get the sample bylaw from the Massachusetts Historical Commission, because then when we get it, we'll have to come up with writing that fits Hadley and fits our needs as a commission and what we want to see moving forward. Thank you for all of that work. That's a lot Lots of Lots to think about. <laughs> like it's a lot, it's a lot to think about. I was like, oh no, each one of these points has a hundred other points. Like <laughs> it's just really complicated. So um, yeah, lots to think about. Did Chris say anything about, um, you know, the demo bylaw as part of a, a bigger, you know, sort of package or, you know, tools in the kit for a, an historical commission? Yeah. So a bigger I, plan? Yeah, I did touch upon that with him briefly. So I was happy to hear, I, I had, I brought up with him um, the local historic district situation that happened a few years ago that we've discussed. Um, and I was happy to hear from him that that actually happens quite often, that local historic districts are very hard to pass in smaller towns, especially. Um, and that he thought that a dem demolition delay bylaw was the appropriate venue for us to start out um, kind of trying to move forward with. And he, I don't know, he just thought it was a really good idea. And he thought that that might be something that would be more readily passed by the town because it, it doesn't give us any power to say whether the building can be knocked down or not. It just gives us power to then try to find a different avenue for the building. So I think it's like a more palatable version of a local historic district and it's a better stepping stone and place for us to kind of go off of because as of right now there's really nothing in place um, for us to have any sort of vetoing power over any of these decisions um, so he thought that was great and then as part of his plan that he can do which was that seven uh, 750 to a thousand dollar range he can do like this pl point by point like plot by plot kind of summary of a plan like a greater plan like what Irene was talking about which would include the demolition delay bylaw and um an assessment of what the historical structures are in Hadley that we care about and kind of like, I don't know, just making a general summary of what we wanna do as a commission moving forward for like the next five to 10 years in terms of historical preservation, which I thought might be a good idea um, moving forward or at least to discuss with him via a meeting and, and see what we think was possible. But I was very glad to hear that this is the right way to start. He was very positive about this. Right. Oh. Other thoughts? Yes, any other questions? So I imagine um, the addendum to a bylaw would also have to be passed by town meeting at two thirds vote, is that right? I think, I think so. so. Yeah, I think um, what, I, what I learned about that was that you just kind of can, put it in the writing of the bylaw. I think you can choose to do it either way. You can choose to okay. put it within the writing of the bylaw and say here, this is part of our bylaw that we're trying to push through. Or we can say, this is an addendum to the bylaw and it's like a part B kind of situation. So I think you can include it in the writing or not. Okay. Um, and there are all those other little bylaws, like mm -hmm. uh, there was even another one. Let me see, it's called something else. There's all these little ones. Um, 
there are like heritage bylaws, I guess, which you can um, push through for things like trees <laughs> or other things like that, that are, you know, of heritage, the, the heritage of the town. And that's how we would um, write that. So I guess it just depends. And he said that he's seen those other kinds of pieces like the demolition definitions and the structure definitions and other things that we could even make other bylaws for, but he's seen them kind of all mashed into one. It just depends on how complicated we want to make the bylaw and what we actually want to put in writing for this first pass at town meeting, which I think a less is more approach judging by what's happened in the past um, is probably a safer bet. Courtney, do you remember how much we paid um, the designer for the most recent designs for the signs? I'm trying to find the um, invoice and failing. What is his name? Tom something? Tom, thank you. I can find out. Okay. Because I think uh, it would be a good idea if we're available to have a meeting in February with Chris and he can talk us through all of this and we can hopefully at that point determine next steps of what we wanna do. Um, as of right now, we definitely don't have $752,000, but I think we could eke out $150 for that meeting, um, but I'm open to discussion. So does the, um, Diana, the, uh, the budget that you submitted for 900, um, does that start in Ju uh, July yeah. because of the fiscal year? Okay. And we don't have any, and how much money is left in the coffers for the, to lend? That's what we're trying to determine right now. I, we had 600 to start with. Feels that we, oh, Courtney. 270. All right. That's less than I thought. So <laughs> whatever 600 minus 270 is, <laughs> that's how much we have left. Um, I, I don't think like we've hit anything else. I did like the sound of his um, presentation on community outreach in terms of these bylaws um, and what we could do to kind of get people on board. He said that mm -hmm. that's a big thing that he consults about, especially in the smaller towns um, and he knows Hadley well. So I thought that that might be a smart place to start, but also he said he does have one on demo delays, but I feel like we kind of have an understanding of the demo delay and where we want to go with that. But he also um, said he could, yeah, there were several other options. So we could chat with him further either via email or on a phone call and just kind of figure out what we would want to go over in the meeting. But I think he's kind of open to ideas, but he said he was like, yeah, it's 150 bucks for me to come for like two hours and talk about whatever it is that you guys want. I can do a presentation or I can do Q and A's. So it might be a really good resource for us to kind of formulate a plan for going forward. Okay. Is there an urgency or uh, a timeline or I guess, yeah, and an urgency to, to get this done? I think Is there the urgency, something looming ahead that. Yeah. I mean, I think this all sort of came about because we wanted to see the Russell school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any updates on that, by the way? I feel like I haven't heard anything in a little bit and I, it's making me nervous <laughs> um, so the town and, and select board um approved the person that they were going to move forward with for the feasibility study um the architectural heritage foundation in boston um they were working on finalizing a contract with them um as of i think last week so um nothing really huge has happened but it's you know moving forward and it's called the Architectural Heritage Foundation? Architectural Heritage Foundation, yep, yep. Yeah, I um, I met with them and other folks from town about a year ago, um, and they explained themselves as an organization that comes in when towns give up on buildings. <laughs> Excellent. That sounds good. That's, that sounds promising. Yes. <laughs> and has anyone looked into the funding that is like the, I think it's federal grant funding that comes in and rehabilitates old buildings um, if they're going to be used uh, as a business, right? I don't know if it, they're I'm not sure if there has, if there's a stipulation about having um, affordable housing 
within them or if that's just kind of the way that a lot of these buildings have gone. But I know that there, there have been a, quite a few around here, especially in Holyoke, um, where there's been this grant funding that's refurbished these buildings and a lot of them have been turned into affordable housing. So I'm not sure if that's an avenue that has been looked into or if it's just not feasible for that building. Uh, affordable housing is not feasible for that building. Yeah, we met with um, uh, whatever the local affordable housing organization is. I can't remember the name of it, um, but they said it wasn't feasible. They would what only be able to get feasible. Like, what is that? feasible? What is feasible for the building? Um, making it a town building. Um, mm -hmm. They are bursting at the seams. Hopkins mm -hmm. Academy is interested in more space. Um, other more lofty things would be like a community center for teens, um, a gathering center for events, um, like performances and such. Um, the Hopkins Academy doesn't have a performance space um, that's reserved for them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maker space, um, uh, artist lofts, all that sort of thing. Yeah. That all sounds so nice. It does. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, sounds I don't so think, good. Oh, like a like a children's museum would be really cool. Oh. <laughs> you say makerspace, and I'm like hooked. I'm like, I don't even know what that I is know. yet, but like, I'm <laughs> on board. It sounds great and beautiful. Yeah. Is, uh, is that like art? Is it artist lofts or artist space? Um. Yeah. yeah kind of. So of like art, art yeah. space. Do you want to explain it? Yeah. Yeah, like people, yeah, artist spaces where they could come in and, and like a studio space, I assume, maybe oh. with, I know some, some of them are like live work studios, at least that's how it is in Los Angeles. Like the Hill Institute in Northampton, where they give so classes cool. and stuff. Yeah. Or craft spaces, like having craft fairs and stuff. It'd be so cool. We could dream. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it all depends on, you know, what the town decides to to, um, and to give it are the um, are the requirements the I don't know construction or renovation requirements um, more stringent for uh, the type of use, or is it just it's you know it, the building has to be safe no matter what it is. No, obviously it does, but um, you know you could you could do something for one price, but you couldn't make it a school. Right. I mean, in terms of um, adjustments that could happen inside is it's my understanding that no walls can be moved based on the way that it was built. Mm -hmm. um, I know there have been uh, concerns about the seismic stability of the building. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. So back to that sense of urgency. Um, I mean, we've been advocating for us a school for a couple of years now and it has sat empty for a, about a decade I think right mm. maybe not quite 2015 um, yeah yeah so we have been a little bit pushed back and forth by the town and what they want to do with it if they want to save it if they want to tear it down so I don't want to lose our momentum with this so I would just like to keep pushing forward with it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if we're not ready to do something in February, I, I would like to keep moving along with this. I know we've got our other projects too. Um, but I think as we already discussed, the local historic district was a bus back in the day. Um, and we're gonna make some good points that this is a good next step to explore. And uh, I think it, it will be challenging to get people on board, but I think this will be an easier sell than a local historic district or other more strict bylaws that we could pass. And what, where was the um, local historic district? Or what, what, um, why did that fail? So and where we, was it? What was it? So back in 2021, when sort of the discussion of Russell School first started, mm -hmm. we had looked into funding and the state has funding available to towns that are known as certified local governments. And to be a certified local government, you have to have a local historic district. Hang on one second, I will be right back. Okay. So we had explored West Street, but then because that's almost entirely privately owned buildings, mm -hmm. we 
include that would be um, a steep hill for us to push our rock up. So then we looked into the center of town because I mean, the, the purpose was to really save Russell School. And center of town, you have a lot fewer owners um, you have the town, mm -hmm. you have the church, you have the farm museum. Um, and then, I mean, we kind of made it a square. So it also included the Dunkin' Donuts building, which would be included, but to the point where like, you would have a pass on basically doing anything with that building since it's not really historic. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we included St. John's, but probably just with the way we would have built that square. And when we brought it forth to the select board, unfortunately, there was some misinformation shared at that meeting and it got a little out of hand. And at that point, the message was sent to us that they were not interested in saving Russell School. So it never got, uh, oh, okay. It never got beyond a select board meeting where when I went into that meeting, my thought process was, I was presenting information and I was inviting the select board to one of our meetings to discuss further, but they just voted me down right then and there. And that was really disheartening. And they even asked, well, we could we make this, but not include Russell School. And I'm like, well, the point is to save Russell School. So no. Um, pretty different board now, isn't it? Uh, it's shifted slightly. <laughs> Two people, three people are the same. Um, and then three people are different. I think a lot of people in town want to save Russell School. They're just not the typical town meeting people. Mm. And the few I've watched lately, if you just get, if each of us got a few friends to go, we would have, like, there are just not many people there. So if you can get the people who care to show up, you can have pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> Um, has the I'll town ever the been? Trip. Has the town ever been surveyed or um, you know a town discussion about the school or about any of yeah. this historic preservation? Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, the Russell School Committee, which I was the chair of, um, did a survey, um, and the majority of people did want to save the building. And the least popular option was demolishing. Hmm. And you had a pretty good turnout to your survey, right? Like quite a few people took it. We did. We had, I want to say 500 or so. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. 10%. Okay. Right. That's good. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. And then if you take out people under the age of 18, it's mm. more than yeah. 10%. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can send that around the, um, has there ever been a um, sort of a, a you know public reach out to uh, for the sort of historic preservation topics in general aside just from the Russell School? Not, I would say recently. Okay. I think there was a lot of work done when the historic districts, the national historic districts, were submitted. But that was um, 30 to 50 years ago that those were okay. done. I saw something, a Hadley Historic Preservation Plan from a uh, report in 2013. Mm -hmm. Was that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What happened with that? Is, that? is that outdated now? It sounds like it would be, but is, or is there anything in there that's still relevant or was it passed or was it just a report? I mean, it, it mentions uh, Russell School, the Goodwin Memorial, um, a few other buildings. Um, and then plans to potentially do something with them, but then nothing happened. Nothing happened, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. Because somebody did. I mean, what, uh, Diana, when, how long have you been on the, um, the Historical Commission? Were you around then? So um, I joined the end of 2017, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this body of work was done by somebody yeah. more than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So when I first joined the commission and Denise joined around the state just before I did, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of active work being done. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit more of social time. It was what? More of a social time. 
oh, mm -hmm. for some people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, really, since I became chairperson, we've been trying to do more things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they did slash our budget significantly mm -hmm. at one point be mm -hmm. because we weren't doing anything. Doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was actually what the town said, you're not spending this money, so why are we giving it to you? Mm -hmm. just, which was fair. Um, but back to the topic at hand, because I don't want us to be here too late. <laughs> um, are we in favor of, of moving forward in, say, about a month to meet with Chris Skelly, see what he has to say, and then we can make our, our next steps from there? What do we do, motion it? <laughs> I'm still not used to this lingo. <laughs> yeah, we can have a motion. I right, motion that. <laughs> Second. All right. Um, so just to be clear, the motion on the floor is that we will uh, reach out to Chris Skelly about having a meeting in February to talk about demolition delay bylaws. Brianna, would you recommend we do the community outreach presentation or could we have a little bit of a, a sampling of everything he does? <laughs> yeah, I think he was kind of open to whatever it is that we are interested in. I know that he has these kind of put together presentations that if if we are really interested in one specific avenue, but I think he's probably open to kind of doing a mixture of both, but I can touch base with him about that and get back to you all about it. If I could just chime in here, I think we absolutely have to do a community outreach and poll the town and the community and just say, what matters to you? You know, cause otherwise what are we doing? If, if these things don't matter, then, you know, they're, then we know, right? <laughs> but um, if it hasn't been done in more than 10 years or if it ever was done at all, it's certainly time to do it again. And um, I would be absolutely help happy to do that. There are so many ways that you can poll people, do online surveys. It doesn't have to cost a lot. You can have, you know, meetings that, you know, we're meeting at SLN, just a lot of ways that you can encourage a dialogue and ask questions and Get people talking. Yeah. I think the other um, portion of that as well is how to engage the community, not just asking mm -hmm. what they want, but also how to make historical preservation a more important part of the community, which I think is another really important piece because it's like what Irene said, like, what else are we even doing here if we can't engage the community? Um, and, you know, it's, it's what we've talked about in every meeting. Like, what is the point of living in a town if we erase the landscape of that town and the mm -hmm. important things and the reason why people moved here? Like, I know I we moved here, for one, because we love the town and we love the historical element and how beautiful the town is. So if we can kind of engage that piece of the mindset of the community, then I think we have a much bigger shot at town meeting. So I agree with Irene. Thank you. And, you know, I, I'd also just kind of go one step further. It's, we're talking about buildings and outbuildings and and that's part of it but you know historic preservation also is the landscape it's the whole area it's the whole heritage you know we're a farming community that's why i moved here um because i just loved the fact that this is a farming community and that's where i wanted to be and um you know that that's a big part of this town's culture it's part of the heritage it's part of the history there's so much that you know um, gets layered into that, and so we we have to protect the landscape as well. Um, and while I'm on that point, does anybody know how that moving storage building ended up going mm. up on uh, the bike path over on Maple? Horrible! Lab? They crossed a line with that. They crossed a line. That was a line that should have been held, and it was crossed. And we yeah. it's on the way to my parents' house. We drive past it every single day, and. Oh, it makes me so angry. So I mean, that you know, that's that's part of this too. You know, it's like, yeah, we can save old buildings, but if we're taking farmland and putting up storage facilities when there easily could have been over on Amity Street, you know, on the border of Hadley and Amherst, where there's another one, how many storage facilities do we need? There's already one on Mill Valley Road. That's pretty big. But it Why? was sold by a farmer who's pretty important in the historical society so <laughs> you know if those are the folks who are really? selling the land to the <laughs> yeah. all right so yeah. we're a so little he, bit off topic <laughs> yeah he was okay with 
no, they have a not, lot of land. It's not off topic though. It's it's part of the landscape, and and that's I I would just put forth that this is part of that, yes. and we should be careful. Just one little um, thing for strategy's sake, just on Russell School, there's um, an all class reunion for Hopkins this year, and that would be a very uh, target rich environment to you know set up a table with you know fun pictures or something of Russell School like that's a group that could be you know talking about their memories of the school and being if we want to engage people and sort of get that on their minds I don't know if that's too far in the future I think it's September but that's something to think about you know going to that and making use of that crowd mm -hmm. good idea um, there's also two things that I noticed on the Mass Historical Commission site um, that are free workshops. And let me see if I can find them. Um, that's a, an incredible site, by the way. Um, well, there was one on establishing local historic districts. So I guess that's, that's a done um, old topic. But developing an historical preservation plan, Friday, April 26 at 10 a.m., they're virtual uh, workshops and they're free. And there's another one, architectural styles, forms, building technologies of Massachusetts and introduction to historical preservation. So there's these four things that Mass Historical Commission is educational things that they're putting out there. And um, I'm going to sign up for one. Thank you. And I'll, I'll send you the link. I'll send everybody the link to it. Yes, thank you. That's great. Okay, so we do still have a motion on the floor for us to okay. spend money and invite Chris Kelly to join us. Oh, I so thought we did. It, it was moved and it was seconded, so we have to vote on that. So <laughs> roll call vote. Mary Carney? Aye. Courtney Meyer? Aye. Erin Costello? Aye. Donna Quinn? Aye. And Diana West? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. So I think next steps, Brianna, do you want to reach out to Chris? Um, loop me in. Certainly. And um, so if we keep it our Tuesday theme, what works best for me would be the 20th as I'm getting surgery on the 27th. So I'll be yeah. adding my That's now fun. Yeah. Um, it's exciting because I'm getting the pins taken out of my ankle and I hate them. So. <laughs> well, then maybe it is fun. <laughs> Not the surgery part, though. Yeah. <laughs> that works for me. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. You said that's a Tuesday? Yes. That might be a little bit tough for me just uh, because my husband will be in Los Angeles, um, but I can try to figure out child care. So I will say yes for now, and if something changes. Okay. It's also school vacation week, so. Yeah, it's a <laughs> holiday on that Monday. I'll be fine, but. <laughs> All right. It also depends if he's available as well. I do have another request, and I know we have to have it be a public event, but I would really like to see you gals in person. Yes, I actually, actually, we can make that happen. I, just, I did. I did I'm all the so open, sick of video meetings. The open and, meeting and, law. Mm -hmm. I went through all of it, by the way. And if we get together as a group, um, as long as we don't talk about anything related to the historical commission, we can actually all get together within the open meeting law. So there is a, you know, we it doesn't seem too burdensome talk. to stay off that topic. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> what's wrong with meeting at Esalon and putting it up on the thing that, you know, a couple of us are getting together at Esalon if anybody wants to make it open, who cares? We're going to be, we have to do this public outreach come. anyway. <laughs> yeah. And if we have to do this public outreach anyway, then we're starting. Yeah. Right? That's true. We'll make a giant sign, put it on our table. We are the historical commission. Please <laughs> ask us any questions. Pull up a chair. Pull up a chair. Picnic yeah. at Russell's school. <laughs> yeah. Free drinks. <laughs> and Diane, I would, you know, it would be great if you could join us. Do you ever come back to Hadley? Are you here very often? Um, I'm there on a lot of weekends. Um, like I just said, I have that surgery on February 27th and then I will be in Hadley actually for probably about a month, but First two weeks, I will not be on my feet at all. So come visit you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it at Diana's. It'll be great. <laughs> my mother will love that. Um, <laughs> if it was summertime, I'd invite you to the back porch, but not so cozy in March. So. <laughs>
Yeah, we're all, I think we're all about fed up with this cold weather right about now. Oof. <laughs> It'd be really nice to all meet at the back, the back deck of Esalon in their nice patio area. But <laughs> unfortunately, all, right, well, all we can do is meet in the germy inside part. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure out an in person meeting, I promise. Okay, cool. are we ready to move on to our CPA application projects update? Yes. Okay. Signs. I have started the application process. I don't want to fall, but I'm looking at Walking tour. I have not yet heard from Margaret Atwood's people or whatever company I applied to. I don't remember because I applied to so many. <laughs> um, but when I did submit the application in November, they said 16 to 20 weeks. So March, oh, April, yeah. hopefully. My gosh. Um, I'm guessing we have not heard back from Holly Hobby. Nope. Okay, I don't think we ever will. <laughs> All right, driving tour. Wait, wait, wait. So, so what's the next step with a walking tour? Can we proceed? I think we got to wait until we hear from Margaret Atwood. Yep. Well, how what, quickly what will they sue us if they don't answer? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have no idea. What, I'm sorry, what do we need our approval for? So we have, we have included a part of a poem Margaret Atwood um, wrote about Mary Webster. Mary Webster. Who was the witch of happening. Right. I mean if you if you quote her, isn't that enough? So because we are publishing it, mm -hmm. um, we have we're supposed to get permission. Because it gets for copyright or something? She gets Yes. Correct. I mean obviously copyright, you know, but I mean we're not gonna say it's you know Diana Webster's poem about Mary Webster. I mean, but I mean, Diana West's poem about Mary Webster, but it, I mean, if you attribute it to her, you still need her approval. From what I understand, from what I read online, yes. Hmm. And uh, I would rather be safe than sorry. Than so. And even if we don't sell it, it's still problematic, right? Yeah, because like, it's not just like, this is like an academic paper that I'm writing and submitting, like it's being, actually published so we have to have the right to it even though we're not like making a profit or anything so if you didn't use her poem an excerpt of her poem it wouldn't matter obviously that right? correct okay how important is the poem we could it's always a nice addition but... yeah it is a nice addition but we could always refer people to it mm -hmm. instead or... I mean, is it really, is it the poem or is it um, the fact that Margaret Atwood is a descendant? I guess it's the poem too. I've Yeah, because it's talking about Mary Webster. It's 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 the poem, of, it's the story, right? I, I know I've read it before. I can't remember how long it is. Yeah, now. it's like open your mouth, close your eyes, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's what we've included isn't the full poem because the full poem is actually pretty long and it like kind of details like, her entire day of the incident, hmm. whereas the excerpt we have is mainly just about her hanging and not dying. Um, and then the Holly Hobby work is, is it like a memoir that we have an excerpt from Courtney about her living on West Street? Yeah, but I can always make that shorter if it means that we can actually print it. Mm. It would be very cool to use both since yeah. they're so specifically related to Hadley. Yeah. Well, and how about the, the driving tour? Is the driving tour going to have the excerpts too? No, that does not include the excerpts. Mm. Um, so I, we, I reached out to Alex about that. He said that they are a little bit behind. Um, they had staffing changes again. Uh, so Alex reached out to Brianna actually because she'd offered to help in the past. So it looks like um, next step is that Brianna is going to offer some of her expertise to help them out. Yes, I actually spoke with him at length today as well. Um, and we've kind of set up a plan moving forward where I'm going to go in and consult on the voiceover piece of the driving tour and um, the recording side of things. So hopefully we can get that piece moving forward soon, but it looks like um, 
It looks like they lost their male voice. So Alex was going to try to put in his male voice and he was hoping that that would work out. So I think there are a couple of moving parts, but they seem to be getting figured out. So hopefully that moves forward sooner rather than later. So I'm going to try to um, work with them in the next few weeks, hopefully before my husband leaves for Los Angeles, because that will put us behind a little bit again, since that's going to be, you know, mom duty for like a month. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get that going as soon as possible. Okay, thank you for Great. working on thank that. Thank you. Okay, the budget, FY 2025 budget, I increase our ask from $600 to $900 um, to help support our three current projects and hopefully find new projects. In regards to possibly doing that preservation plan that Brianna brought up and Irene brought up as well, um, we could maybe get CPA funding for that if we wanted to explore applying in the fall. That's what I was um, thinking. I, there also might be MHC grants for that kind of work. Yeah, there, there was something, I wasn't sure if it applied to a summary or an actual survey, but I think he and I, it was very briefly touched upon in our discussion, but it looks like there may be some sort of grant funding potentially for a more in-depth survey and kind of summary of what we want to be doing but i'm just not sure what length and like how much money that actually offers because it, an actual survey like you said is around thirty five thousand dollars, which i don't think any of us have the money <laughs> for right now so and he said it takes like nine months too and it's like a really really in-depth thing where everyone is really heavily involved and i just i don't think any of us are kind of like at that <laughs> mm. i don't think any of us have that kind of time either right now so um, but the but the summary, um, he said, just takes about a day and we can kind of all get together and go through everything. And I don't know if it's like one day, you know, all together, but or if it's kind of a couple of different blocks of time, but it seemed like a much more feasible thing to start with. More like a day long retreat kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Any questions about the budget? Nope. Okay. Oh, so when do we find find out? Um, somebody, Carolyn sent me a, like, schedule. Hold on, let me see. Annual time meeting budget countdown. Uh, okay. Budget presentation by town administrator to select board and finance on February 7th. Deadline okay. for all annual reports. We'll talk about that next. Um, February 12th to 29th, Finance Committee meets with department heads. March 6th, Finance Committee reports to the select board. April 3rd, Finance Committee recommendations presented to select board. So that seems- How do you feel about this 900 getting approved? I can see it going either way. <laughs> uh, well, if I, we have a couple of things like, okay, you know, th this is what we're gonna do with the money this year. Would that help? Uh, I did like provide some vague examples. Um, and they usually come back and ask questions. Um, we typically do get invited to a finance committee meeting to defend it if necessary. Um, I think it's, we have shown that we are actively working on things and we want to do even more things. Mm -hmm. And, um, the money isn't just languishing and, and we are actually spending it and doing the work. Right. And now we have Chris Kelly, who is could be doing uh, a number of things for us that still yeah. fit within the, that budget for next year. So mm -hmm. do, do, do you need information about him, a, a, a CV or, um, you know, statement of work or? Anything? He has his web his web website is really comprehensive. I can send that uh, to you guys. It okay. kind of covers everything. Um, and uh, I was gonna say I also think that if we explain in the right way, maybe or just explain in general what we were thinking about having a, a summary of historically significant properties kind of covered and a, a summary of um, where we want to go as a commission and what we want to do for the town in terms of um, preservation you know, they may go for that because I, you know, I do think a lot of people do care about preservation in the town. Um, and it's, you know, it's not like we're talking about like 
putting up all these local historic districts and making all these plans. It's like, we just want to kind of a summary of what we have here and what our resources actually are, because, you know, as far as I can tell, and, and, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, do we have like some sort of really comprehensive database of all of the historically significant structures? Whatever is on the state one. Whatever's on the state one. And yeah, I think there were a lot of buildings on that, but. Mm -hmm. He said it's it's good if you can invest the time to make a list for your own town um, and kind of keep it updated. It does require work on the commission's part. Um, but once you kind of have that comprehensive list, then you can go from there and you can use that uh, as a really important resource moving forward in terms of like demo delays and all these other things that we might need, um, especially if we have which I know Hallie does a lot of the paperwork about these places, like old photographs or records or whatever, which I know there's a lot of. So um, it might be something that we can talk to him about kind of like starting to work on moving forward because that I'm sure that would be really helpful. And I'm sure it would also draw people in if we said, hey, we're making this really cool comprehensive list of all of the history in this town and in terms of the structures, like people might be really invested in that, especially if you know, we get to talk to them about their own property or their ancestors or whatever else. So we might be able to spin it in a way that's like more fun than, you know, kind of like us holding power over anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the budget conversation bleeds into what well, I did not add to the agenda because I only found out about it after I submitted the agenda is that we have to submit an annual report for the town report at the May town meeting. So this is by calendar year, not fiscal year. So um, some thoughts I had was to include that we received the CPA funding and the current status of the project. Looks like in the past, I mentioned people who have departed and are new people and we got to see amazing new people. So I'll definitely mention you guys. And then um, do we want to mention we're working on a demolition delay bylaw or should we hold off on that for now? and maybe wait until we have something more comprehensive. I would err on the side of caution on that one. Okay. You know, you know the select board and the committees and people better than we do, I think. <laughs> but you certainly don't want to tip your head if you think that's something that's going to be uh, shot down yeah. before it ever gets written. Um. I was also just going to include like one paragraph saying that we had worked with various parties on projects like the PBTA bus depot and Route 116 Chase Bank. Um, mm -hmm. like that. All right, so yeah. I'll put that together. Also, and... maybe the, the 101 East Street stuff too. Yeah. Because that's been like a very ongoing discussion. And we're, I feel like we're trying really hard to find some sort of workaround for that core building. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, seems like a good thing to say. All right, so apparently it's due February 15th. So I will write that up and um, then I can send an email just to see if you guys have any edits. Okay, anything else that has crossed your mind but we didn't get it on the agenda in time? Um, well, in terms of the demo delay bylaw, I feel like I can write up well, I'll send you Chris Kelly's information and kind of a, a more comprehensive version of what we talked about in terms of him um, and just kind of look at my notes that I took. But I also want to send a bulleted list of the things that we need to think about, like what we want the definition of a structure to be, what we want the definition of a timeline to be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, what we want the definition of demolition to be, which I think is probably one of the most important ones. So um, I'll write that stuff up for you guys to all ponder for the next meeting, because I think we should decide as a group on what we think is important. And definitely, like Irene said, I think we should defer to the people who kind of know the town a little bit better than us. I, you know, I don't, I feel like I'm still learning about, especially about like the agricultural structures and things like that. So um, Diana, I know you, you know this town really well. So um, and, you know, and there may be other people, too, that we can ask in terms of what they think is historically significant in terms of demolition, because I'm sure there are a lot of agricultural outbuildings that might be really important that, you know, we don't even really know about, or I, do, I at least don't know about. So food for thought for everybody for the next meeting and kind of where we want to go from there. Thank you. That sounds amazing. That'll be really helpful. I just want to 
brainstorm um, different ways to brand demolition by lot just sounds like something I, I wouldn't like. <laughs> like I mean, it just sounds negative and unpleasant. So we might yeah. want to just think yeah. on that. Think about rebranding way. Like, Rebrand it. That is Irene, what it's called. Irene, we need you for that. The marketing <laughs> queen over there. Yeah, I know it's an official That's name, it. but we can call it something else and yeah, the, the conversations code. with the code. <laughs> um, you know, there is a report on the state preservation plan. What's it called? The state presentation plan from 2018 to 2022. Has anybody ever seen that? It's it's now they're now working on 2023. It's supposed to be it was supposed to be out for the draft review last May. I can't I haven't seen anything, but there's some really good information on um, uh, the sort of the state of the state historic preservation wise. And I'll I can copy some things and it might be helpful for you, Diane, to just see like you know how Hadley stacks up to other towns and the limited resources and the volunteer or just. A lot of the challenges that a lot of um, uh, local and municipal historical commissions face is very well documented in this. And, um, you know, I kind of took heart at it thinking I'm like, oh, OK, so we're kind of all sort of bobbing up and down in the same water here. But there are resources that can help, you know, and um, and I think it's fabulous that you met this guy, Chris. And. He was uh, kind of saying a lot in the same vein of like, you guys are right in the thick of like the soup of these small towns and, you know, and what happens in terms of historical preservation. So the same, it, it gave me a lot of, um, a lot of positive vibes. I feel like to know that like trying to put through a local historic district and having it shot down was like a very, very common occurrence. And so uh, some of the things that, you know, has, have been a little bit disheartening. I know for the group before Irene and Mary and I joined, um, but still to hear that that's very normal was, you know, a little bit more on the positive end, but yeah, same thing. I think these resources are really good um, to learn about. And, and also you can see on, I think it's on his website, but I know they have it on the mass historic district or uh, commission as well, is they're talking about when you have these demolition delay bylaws and you have these certain types of bylaws, like for example, the list one um, they have, photo examples of buildings that got demolished because somebody just forgot to put it on a list. And so they have these like really real time examples of what can happen if you go about uh, putting the demolition delay bylaw in writing in a certain way and like use certain phrasing. So I thought that was also helpful because, you know, we can't just like arbitrarily write something. And so I think using a bylaw that Chris has already written for the historical commission, the state historical commission um, is probably a smart idea. And then just like specifying it for Hadley. Um, so they, luckily there are those great resources through the state um, that we have available that other towns have also used in the past that seem to be working well for them. Like in the meeting that he was talking about um, or that he met, had met with the Amherst Historical Commission, I guess their demo delay bylaw, whenever it was put in place, I think it was quite a while ago, they were trying to rewrite it because it was super arbitrary and it was like had all these random pieces in it and so they had had all these really strange arguments over different parts of the town and different buildings and trees and fences and like whatever else and they had and he basically said like this demo delay bylaw because it wasn't this classic one that is used by every other town that he wrote or it wasn't um i don't know scripted in a way that it usually is was so confusing that people were kind of trying to dig through it just to figure out what they were doing so I think if we can streamline it as best as possible, like what Mary was saying, trying to make it a little bit more palatable um, and not like branded as such a weird, complicated thing, um, if we can streamline it as much as we possibly can, I think that would be easier and easier sell as well. Yeah. And, you know, I would just be cautious also that, you know, if the um, what's driving it, the urgency is a specific purpose, like the school that you don't end up with unintended consequences in what we draft just to get it through and save the school. And we end up, you know, I don't know, getting run out of town <laughs> because everybody's pissed off that we, we, I can't knock down my garage now and do phase two on my house because there's a demo bylaw, right? 
I mean, it would only buy us, it would only buy us time. Luckily, I think that's the good thing about this is it buys us time to then work on another resolution versus mm -hmm. having any sort of like vetoing power in total and being able to say absolutely not, you can't do that. Um, so I think it, it is an easier thing. And Chris said that he has seen many small towns approve demo delay bylaws that he thought there was no way in hell we're going to approve them. So he was really positive about it. He, he thought that it was a good, a really good option. So hopefully it works out. Okay. I think we've come to the end of our agenda for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Do we also just want to get a meeting date for March set now too? Mm -hmm. We'll be in the thick of things with Chris at the next meeting. So. Closer to the end of March would be better for me. I will be away in the middle of March. So it's the 27th. I don't know if anyone else has conflicts, but. Um, did you say the 27th? Yeah. I think that would work. That's a Wednesday. Is that okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong month. I'm on February. <clears throat> The 26th. Yep, that's fine. I think that should work. Yeah. It's Holy Week. <laughs> but Tuesday's a good it. down day in Holy Week. Okay. <laughs> no church. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, motion you. to adjourn. Oh, so moved. So moved. Aye.